Okay, this is section 3.3, and we're going to be solving multi-step equations. When we finish, I want you to be able to solve equations that require multiple steps to solve them, and I also want you to be able to solve equations that model real life. So first, let's go through the steps. The first thing you're going to do is simplify both sides of the equation. That just means you're going to combine your like terms. Step two is going to come in the next lesson. The third thing you're going to do is you're going to use your inverse operations to isolate the variable. So if you need to move it to the other side of the equal sign and it's added, you're going to subtract. Fourth thing you're going to do is you're going to solve. And when you solve, you're going to end up with your variable equal to some number. The fifth thing is you need to check your answer. There's no excuse for missing any of these because you can go back and check them all. So let's go ahead and solve one. I have 1 third x plus 6 is equal to negative 8. So the, my goal is to isolate this x. And I'm going to start by working further away from the x by who's easier to get rid of. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. So now I have 1 third x is equal to negative 6, I'm sorry, negative 8 minus 6 gives me a negative 14. So now 1 third is the only thing that's attached to the x. I have a fraction for my coefficient, so what do I do? That's right, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal of 1 third is 3 over 1. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So now we have x is equal to negative 14 times positive 3. Negative times a positive is going to give me a negative. Negative 14 times 3 gives me a negative 42. And that is my solution. Now let's take a look at these. Now this time, I want you to notice that I have two terms that have x. So the first thing I have to do is I have to combine my like terms. I'm going to combine these guys first. Now what is 7x minus 3x? Okay, well that gives me 4x. So now I have 4x minus 8 is equal to 24. Remember, my goal is always, when I'm solving, to get the variable by itself. I have minus 8. What's the opposite of that? Plus 8. So I'm going to add 8 to both sides. So now I have 4x. Negative 8 plus 8 adds up to 0. It's equal to 24 plus 8. And 24 plus 8 is 32. Now, x still isn't by itself, still has this 4 there, so I'm going to divide everything by 4. Now, I have x is equal to positive 32 divided by a positive 4 gives me a positive 8. That is my solution. Now, if I wanted to check this, I could very easily check it could say, I'll start with this one right here. So if I had 4 times 8, minus 8 is equal to 24. And I just want to see if this is a true statement. 4 times 8 is 32. And what's 32 minus 8? It's 24. 24 is equal to 24. So this checks out. Now on this one, I would like for you to pause, and I'd like for you to work it out. When you're finished, just resume the video, and you can check your answer. Okay, so when you solve this one, you combined 5x minus 2x, which gave you 3x. So you had 3x minus 5 is equal to 7. You needed to get the 5 away from the x, so you added 5 to both sides. Negative 5 plus 5 added up to 0. 
leaving you with 3x is equal to 12. Now divide both sides by 3, you end up with x is equal to 4. Okay, this one's a little bit more complicated. We've got the distributive property in here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drop down our 5x. Remember, I'm following the order of operations while I'm simplifying. So what is a positive 3 times x? It's going to give me a positive 3x. What is a positive 3 times a positive 4? It's going to give me a plus 12. I'm going to bring down my equal sign and my 28. Now I'm going to go through, I'm going to combine my like terms. In this case, it's 5x and 3x, and that gives me 8x plus 12 is equal to 28. Now I'm trying to isolate the x, so I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. So I have 8x is equal to 28 minus 12. So that's going to give me 16. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 8. So x is equal to 2. Okay, now once again, I'd like for you to pause just for a moment. Solve this equation for me, and as soon as you finish, please resume. Okay, so when you solved this one, you remember to distribute the 12 to the x and the positive 12 to the negative 3. Then you should have combined your like terms. Now you're going to add 36 to both sides because this 36 was negative. So you end up with 16x is equal to 64. The inverse operation of multiplication is division, and you end up with x is equal to 4. Okay, now this one is going to work the exact same way. The only thing you need to pay attention to here that's a little bit different is I'm distributing a negative 3. So once again, pause, and then resume when you're finished. Okay, so now let's go and check that answer. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down my 4x because I'm not doing anything with it yet. I'm going to distribute my negative 3. I have negative 3 times positive x, which gives me negative 3x. Negative 3 times negative 2 gives me a positive 6. And all of that is equal to 21. Now we're going to combine our like terms. 4x minus 3x gives me 1x. So I have 1x plus 6 is equal to 21. I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. So I end up with x is equal to positive 15. Subtract the small number from the large number. Keep the sign of the large. Okay, now let's look at this one. This one's a little, it can be difficult if you don't pay attention. But if you look at it for a moment, you're going to notice something. I've got this negative 6 fifths, and I really don't want to work with that. I could distribute it and I would get the right answer. It would be a lot of work. I don't really want to work that hard. So I'm noticing that this negative 6 fifths is multiplied by this entire thing. So I'm going to treat it like it's a coefficient. So I'm going to multiply each side by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal would be negative 5, 6. So this is now going to cancel out. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Now I can simplify. 6 will go into 6 one time. 6 will go into 66 11 times. Now what is negative 5 times positive 11? Oh, that's negative 55 is equal to x plus 3. 
Now I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides and negative 58 is equal to x. So we generally would write it as x is equal to negative 58. And that's my answer. Okay, last problem. It's really important to be able to convert these problems from words. So if we have a summer job running errands for a local business, you earn five dollars per day plus two dollars for each errand. I you to write and solve an equation to find out how many errands you need to run to earn seventeen dollars in one day. So when we read this, it's probably a little overwhelming at first, but they're only talking about one day. How much money do you make in one day? For this job, you make five dollars a day, but you also get two dollars for each errand. Well, how many errands do you did you run? Oh, I don't know. So it says plus two dollars for each errand. So if I ran two errands, I would get four dollars. If I ran three errands, I would get six dollars. So what am I doing there? I'm multiplying. So I'm going to put E for Aaron, and I want to know how many errands I'd need to run to earn $17. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to isolate my variable. I've got 5 plus 2e is equal to 17. I'm going to subtract 5 from each side. So 2e is equal to 12. Divide each side by 2. E is equal to 6. And just to ensure that we understand what it is that we're talking about, whenever we have a problem like this, I want you to write your answer in a complete sentence. So we'd say you would need to run. six errands to earn seventeen dollars in one day. Okay, we're going to be working on this some more and that's it for today.